Have you ever had like limiting thoughts or I can't do this or I want to quit? Have you ever had thoughts like that? You've had a battle? Of course. I, I think it'd be weird if you didn't. And even going through it, I still do. I have my days where I don't feel as good. You have to continue to play the long game and remind yourself like just another day, just another step and keep going. Hi, I'm Eric Weir, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Stuttering Your Way to Success. There is no success without setback. And today I've got a very special guest, James Maslow. You may have seen him with uh, on Nickelodeon's Big Time Rush, but he, 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 he's, he's not only a singer, a dancer, but an actor. And guess what? He makes movies, too. So let's talk today to James and, and l- learn more what he's up to today. How are you, James? Hey, Eric. What an intro. I'm great, man. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic. So, so, so what are you doing now? Well, I am uh, at my new place in Nashville. Just moved to Nashville about a month ago. And it truly feels like home. And it's the first time I've said that in a long time, but bouncing around from state to state. And then professionally, man, everything is firing. I'm starting mm-hmm. to write for a new record for Big Time Rush. Right. We just announced a tour in June that um, sold out in pre-sale. So we just added more dates that are actually going up. Right now, depending on when this airs, they may have been up already. Yeah. Um, and then putting together some film and TV. I've shared a couple with you offline. Sure. Got a bunch of really exciting projects that I've been creating, producing, and uh, I expect at least a couple of them to be filming this year. That's fantastic. So, so, so what motivates you to keep going? I mean, you're, you're involved in so many things. I mean, what a cool job. You know, I, I still think back to being a kid and I think back to being in performing arts schools where I was spending my time. I mean, I would have paid, I think I did pay, you know, to be in productions, to get to sing, to get to act, to get to do these things that now I have been blessed enough to turn into a living. So just remembering that day after day that uh, I get to create my own future, my own opportunities. And the more time I put into it, the more I'm going to get out of it. And I love doing it. So I suppose what keeps me going besides the love is that I, don't know how to do much of anything else. And I want to keep entertaining and doing this for the rest of my life. So I better be good at it. I better put in the work. (laughs) That's fantastic. That's a great answer. No plan B. That's good. That's good. So, so what would you go back? I mean, your younger self, you're, you're, you're in school, you're dreaming, you're thinking about, you know, being on stage. I mean, what advice would you give yourself knowing what you know now? Man, that's a really great question. And I've been asked similar questions in the past and I've never answered it this way because my perspective continues to change as I continue to learn. And something that I've learned very recently from you, you've reinforced this. I continue to learn with this amazing circle of um, friends and mentors and influence that I've been lucky enough to be invited into is try and be of service in everything you're doing. Instead of looking at it, like I think all of us do at the beginning, which is like, I want to get this for me, for my dream, so I can be an actor. It's like, that's not wrong. I think it's actually relatively inherent in us, whether that's social or how we're born, I don't know. But when I was able to make the switch from like, hey, I wanna just do this for me versus how can I help the other person in this deal? How Mm. am I most of value to them? Mm. Um, Let's say just from an acting perspective, you know, going into an audition going like, hey, I wanna solve their problem. They don't really know what they want. They have a description, an outline, maybe something in their head. But I want to come in so on point and so prepared that I solve the problem. They go, dude, we can cast this guy. He's great. Man, that's just it. instead of having to you know, go in with the idea of like, oh, I don't know. Let me get this. Let me do it for me. So without droning on and on, I think try and be of service to your friends, your relationships, um, and of course, in your business, you know, what value are you adding? And it, it may seem strange to people who haven't thought this way before, but I can tell you the more that I go into relationships and business and friendships and my personal relationship, my girlfriend thinking, mm-hmm. how can I be of service? How can I help them? The more I seem to receive back. Man, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. It, it, it's a great way to, to, to look at life and to look at the future. But has it always been that way? Have you ever had like limiting thoughts or I can't do this or I want to quit? Have you ever had thoughts like that? You've had a battle? Of course. Of course. I I think it'd be weird if you didn't. And even going through it, I still do. I have my days where I don't feel as good. Mm -hmm. My days where I'm more doubtful. 
mm-hmm. uh, like anything, you have to work at this. It's, it's a mindset, it's habits, it's everything you put out there and everything I'm saying, mm-hmm. it's with a, a real belief that the more good I do in the world, the more the universe is going to conspire to reciprocate that tenfold, but it doesn't always equate that way directly, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to continue to hold that faith. You have to continue to play the long game and remind yourself like just another day, just another step and keep going. Um, It certainly has gotten easier for me. The more things have worked out, the more my business grows, the more I am growing as a person. However, there are still challenging days. And I think, again, it's extremely normal to have those moments of doubt, days of doubt, um, maybe weeks of doubt, but I think that's kind of the key there. It used to be weeks and months and maybe years. And now I try and condense it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't have time to be that doubtful for that long. Right, so right, I try right, and condense right, it, you know, and be like, all right, think about it, right. be sad about it, cry right. about it, whatever it is, but, you know, then get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so, um, do, do, you, do you set goals? And if you do, are they near term, long term, short term? Are they written down or just things you kind of know you're working toward? Or how do you do that? Yes, all of the above. Yeah. I absolutely set goals. I try and set a few different stages, you know, short term, kind of that medium range, and then long term. Sure. Um, and I think it's important to just have a metric, whether you hit that goal or not. And framing that perspective, I think, is also extremely important. What I mean by that is I just read a book called The Gap and the Gain, pretty popular book. Mm-hmm. Um, if you haven't heard of it, it essentially talks about Uh, where you started, where you're at, and where you want to go. And what's interesting about where we want to go, and I'm sure you can attest to this and actually love your perspective on this, is in my life thus far, and I imagine this is going to continue, that keeps getting further and further away because it keeps growing bigger and bigger in terms of what I thought I wanted then and what I want now. And then I get close. I'm like, well, I want to go further. So in many ways, where I want to go is kind of like the horizon and that and I'm never going to reach it because when I get there, I'm going to want to go further. Sure. And, and measuring against where I started and where I want to go, you're always going to be in the gap, as the book explains it, which mm-hmm. means you're, you're never going to be satisfied. Versus sure. looking at that goal, which is the metric I'm referring to here, and measuring whether you got there or didn't get there, you're somewhere where you, where you are, right? This is mm-hmm. measuring backwards to where, from where you started. That, to me, is, is the only way to look at success and look at, moving forward because there is constantly going to be growth there. And then your perspective is constantly going to be like, okay, yeah, maybe I didn't get to where I wanted to right now yet, but right. holy crap, look at how far I've come. Yeah. So I think that's what you're, where setting goals is important. And then when you're reading the goals too, not being frustrated if you're not quite there, um, measure backwards, appreciate where you are, learn, and then hopefully keep moving forward towards those goals. That is so true. And uh, I, I remember the, I, I had a goal of getting a car at age 18 and I was able to pay cash for it and prepare for it. And driving it home is probably the most depressed I'd ever felt up until <laughs> what is that? In my life. It was because I was like, is this all there is? I put so much stock into it and yeah. had a picture of it and visualize and smell what it'd be like to drive it. And I got it. I'm like, eh, <laughs> is that all there is? Right. <laughs> and, then, and then I'm like, you know, I really need to enjoy the journey, you know, and I look back at the struggles, you know, you've had of uh, or you or anybody in their career, right? The setbacks. And and sometimes you look back when you're sleeping on the sofa and you're, you're, you're eating some of the pizza today, some tomorrow, and you can make your car note or your apartment, but not both the same month. Mm-hmm. At that time, it's tumultuous. And you look back later and realize those are some pretty good times, maybe even more simple than today in some ways. For sure. You know, so, so how do you recognize with, 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 with perspective. I like what you said is very good. I mean, looking back and, and c- celebrating your victories and recognizing it's a journey. And like we talk, there's no success without setback, right? It's re- really important to, to have that perspective. Yeah. What is it like to stand on stage in front of 20,000 screaming <laughs> fans? What's that like? I mean, it's, it's probably just as magical as, as you could imagine. Uh, one thing that people may, may not really factor in is there's a physical energy that you get from the crowd. Mm. You go on stage, we're all made of energy. You know how much you believe in that or not? I mean, just biologically, right? There's energy being released off us at all time. And when you yell and you scream and you're in a crowd of people and you're a stadium at a football game, you feel it. And then imagine right. all of that energy being directed at you. It's wild. Yeah. And... It's something that used to be 
kind of the butterfly inducing effect, right? Where like you get butterflies in your stomach and you get nervous because of all of that. And then I've learned just through doing it so much to embrace it. And I know when I get on stage, even if I'm exhausted, even if I'm nervous, all of that energy is going to focus me. It's going to wake me up and it's going to help me do my job. And that's the beauty of my fan base, the Big Time Rush fan base, my personal fans. Mm -hmm. They literally make my job easier because it's t it's tiring being on tour. You know, and after your 40th show or whatever it might be, I know that even if I'm spent, I know they're going to help me be excited, wake up. And every night because of that, when I get on stage, I have the best time of my life. So it's a lot of everything and just a lot of energy and a lot of joy. That's fantastic. How do you find balance? I mean, I talk to people all the time. Is there is there is there such thing as balance, or is it more is it more? Is, there's not balance. There is balance, or, or is a harmony and having like a seasonality? Because I imagine when you're on on tour, going for, you know, there, there's probably ham on tour. Tour that takes a lot of time and energy, and then there's other times where you have more times focused on other things. So, how do you how do you manage that? Yeah, that's a great question. Is there ever such thing as balance? And <laughs> You know, I would actually ask you do, you, do you think that that's something you ever solve or is it just constantly a balancing game? No, I, I don't, I don't think there's any, anything as balanced. I don't, I don't think there is. I, I think there's, I, I look at it as harmony and yeah. for me personally, and I think you, I try to evaluate, you know, at least every 90 days, hopefully every 30 days where I am in five areas, faith, family, fitness, finance, friends kind of areas. And you know, if you start slipping below a six or a five, you're like, okay, I need to realize this is I'm ignoring yeah. this right now. Maybe that's okay for a minute. And what I've what I've concluded in meeting people over the years is what you ignore for the long term consumes you in the end, right? So if you ignore yeah. your health, you spend your wealth to get your health back. If you ignore your close relationships, you try to spend wealth to restore relationship, right? And and really, if you can look at it over time and kind of see where you are versus where you'd like to be and just make periodic adjustments and realize, hey, I'm on tour, it's going to be difficult for the next 90 days. Yeah. There's nothing I can, I can't make time. But then on the other side, we have this thing to look forward to. I, I think I think for me anyway, I mean, the, 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 that's been something that, that's helped out a lot. Yeah. So today you're, you're, I mean, a reunion tour, was that your idea or whose idea was it to have a reunion tour? Well, look, I, the guys in the band at different times wanted to bring the band back. So I think everybody at certain times kind of felt like, oh, now's a good time. And I'll admit, I wasn't excited about it. The first several times people kind of said, hey, let's do this. I was like, no, it's only been a couple of years or no, I'm doing this movie and I want to focus on that or no. I, it was necessary, objectively, for all of us to take a break. We did, uh, I don't know, 80 episodes, maybe more, maybe less, somewhere around there, of the TV show, single camera, and then multiple world tours, very little mm. downtime. Um, then, of course, press and dance rehearsals and writing the music. I mean, it was the first five, six years of Big Time Rush was extremely condensed and ex just extreme. It was so much mm. of everything. And we're artists. We are young artists. And so from an acting perspective, I wanted to play other roles. And from a musician perspective, I wanted to write more music and things without barriers and borders and blinders, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So we needed that time. However, there did come a point where I sat in the office uh, with our current management and the only team that would ever work for us, in my opinion, um, mm -hmm. faculty management. And I was sitting down with them, with Jared Paul, having a conversation actually about solo music and about some other ventures and I was playing them bunch of stuff and talking about nothing to do with Big Time Rush. And at the end of it, posed a couple of questions. It was like, hey, what if we did bring the band back? Like, is the timing right now? Is there interest in the market? And he said, well, let me make some calls and I'll let you know tomorrow. He didn't want to just give me an answer on what he thought. He wanted to call our old reps and he wanted to call Live Nation and he wanted to call his relationships and say, hey, what do you think about this? Second question was, would you want to manage us? And that was one of the fastest yes I've ever gotten out of Jared Paul in my life. He's very analytical. He's very smart. Right, right, you know, right. he had put thought on that before I asked that question. Mm -hmm. um, and as unexpected as it was in the moment, he was, yep, hundred percent done deal. Would love to be my pleasure, you know, be my honor. And then the last one was, how do we own it? How do we figure out a way to operate independently? Is, is that even a possibility? So from there, I went to, of course, calling the guys. Is everybody in the same place in life? Does everybody have the same interests? Does everybody agree with this team? Pretty much yeses across the board. And from there, we all collectively 
have scaled, have put together just a dream team from the attorney that helped us license and get to where we are now to just a hell of a booking agent crew, a lot of which worked with us back in, in the day. I mean, man, I just, I love the team surrounding us because we all work very hard as like the guys and on stage, I want to be with no one else. These guys are incredible, but it takes so many people to build a business at this level and this scale. And frankly, that was a world that was foreign to the four of us together. So Mm. as business partners, we've needed and continue to need support and guidance and it's working beautifully because of that team. So that's, you know, that more, most detailed version of that story I've given thus far, but ultimately it all lined up at the right time for us. Are there characteristics of, of both band members or team members that you look for that make you think this will be a good team member uh, or band member? I mean, I want to pose that question back to you after I give you my answer, because I'm curious <laughs> about your response there. What <laughs> I've learned in business outside of BTR and as well with BTR is patience, communication, and respect. No matter what the issue is or the proposition is, whatever, go into it, which is a very like respectful approach, you know, especially when there are disagreements and there's always going to be disagreements, especially with four artists running a company. Right. Um, And just always trying to see the other side and trying to find something that makes everybody happy. You know, having said that, when it comes to personal ventures and businesses I'm growing on the producing side, the real estate side, the speaking side, I really look at it as energy. Mm -hmm. Is this person as enthusiastic, as excited as I am? Mm -hmm. Do they have the willpower, the tenacity, the ability um, to put in the time and the effort to bring this to fruition? And are we on the same frequency? Are we in the same wave, wavelength? Because there are extremely smart people who just aren't necessarily a right fit for my energy, a right that's fit right. for the way that I think and the way that I operate. And that's going to do neither of us any good. So mm-hmm. uh, what's, what's crazy is recently from meeting you and David Melton last few years becoming a mentor of mine, a really good friend in this circle that I continue to expand, it, it seems that the more I'm true to myself and the energy the excitement that I have, the almost neurotic energy where I just don't stop and I love it, the more I'm inviting those kinds of people into my world and the easier it's getting to find business partners that work the same way. So mm-hmm. I want your, your response on that, but that's, that's kind of how I'm slowly figuring this out. It's a great answer, great answer. Uh, I, I look for integrity, I look for clarity, and I look for competence. And, and, and the final thing I've learned to look for is humility, meaning are you teachable? And, and yeah. not like a, a lowly kind of humility, more like a, a assured uh, uh, humility where it's like, I, I can be wrong or let's learn about this. And I think how, how you've rephrased it is you can communicate around the, the, the tougher issues and things of that nature and not yeah. jump to conclusions. So that, that's always important to have. And I've, I had, had people say, you know, the, the worst thing you can have is somebody who's really smart without any integrity. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> integrity. Yeah. So in, in, in integrity, you want competence, you want clarity, and you want humility. I love that. That's helpful, we'll look, actually. We'll, 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 we'll look for. Thank you. Yeah, have you have a, a guideline. And uh, competence, too, is interesting because there are consciously competent people that yeah. are the best kind, right? They know what they can do, but they're willing to learn. You know, but they're very good at it. They're conscious of what they're good at. And they focus on the strengths. And those are the best partners. And then there's, like, the people that are kind of unconsciously competent like somehow they're getting it done but they don't know how and you don't know how and like that's probably not a good recipe for the future (laughs) then there's incompetence right and the consciously incompetent are also that's okay because that's a teachable person they're aware that they don't have the skill set yet they're you have that humility that you pointed out and like cool that's all right where it gets scary and what i try and avoid is the unconsciously incompetent the (laughs) ones that aren't aware but seriously and this is pretty common amongst I don't know, people, maybe it's maybe, <laughs> maybe artists, especially, I don't know, but, um, <laughs> where they just don't know what they don't know and they're unwilling to learn and they think they know more. It's just, that's where it gets right. a little bit messy. So I think as long as you're aware and you're willing to learn, it's like, you can work with that when you're just unaware, whether you're good or not good, it's right. tough to work with that. Yeah. My advice to people, you know, if you're particularly young or if you have a, whatever it happens to be a script you're working on, or you, 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 you've got that shot with, with somebody is come in approachable 
and, and come in teachable, even if you, you even if you think you know it. I mean, if you at least act like, hey, I, I, I can learn more than this and that. And it's, it's helpful. It's, it's so helpful. I, I, I heard a wise man say that that wisdom is wasted on the old and energy is wasted on the young. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so try to find that. It, it's, it's important. It's important. Um, so as an actor, a singer and a speaker, I've got to think they all impact you and move you in a different way. Is there, is there one that's like, just feels more all around or is it kind of like, boy, you, you love the variety or because they, they have to, I mean, I, there, there's a different energy in each one of those, I would think. Yeah. Uh, great question. I've always liked the balance of it. And as you said, the variety of it, mm. life is supposed to be about variety. You know, mm. even if you, you're supposed to eat, different fruits with the different seasons, right? I just feel like that's more of nature's way. You're supposed to try different things. Mm -hmm. um, so when I'm on tour after months, man, I want nothing more than to be in one place. And then I can be on set and play a character that's outside of me. That's not all about me. It's about the character, feel removed and then have some, uh, you know, solace of being in a single environment. And then, you know, when I'm one place too long, I get antsy because I love touring and I love traveling and I want to go back. And what's interesting, though, is speaking is the newest vertical. Okay. I've been this guy for my friends and family for as long as I can remember, which is, hey, what's the issue? Let's think about it rationally, logically. Let's try and find a solution. I've always referred to myself as like an executive producer of ideas, and that's translated to actually producing film and TV. But now speaking has come into this because I keep getting asked to jump in front of an audience and translate a message. Take something that's a little bit complicated on this island and bring it into, for lack of a better term, layman's terms. Mm -hmm. um, from commencement speeches to um, you know, doing more podcasts like this. Mm -hmm. And this, maybe because it's newest to me, is the mm -hmm. most exciting mm -hmm. because I really truly feel that I'm adding direct value. When I get to get in front of, especially a crowd of young adults, mm -hmm. seems to be this unique thing that's happening where I'm able to translate this energy, this enthusiasm, this excitement, these ideas, my life lessons into something that they can actually utilize and remember to believe in themselves, to be more confident, to go out there and, and not be afraid to fail. And, and in some ways I'm seeing this happen right in front of my eyes. So this is fulfilling me so much right now. And I'm doubling down on wanting to be out, th out there more often, wanting to be in a voice for young sure. people, my generation to thrive and succeed and be the best version of themselves. That's great. That's great. When you have a setback and we all, we all do, um, do you have like a go-to process you have or how do, how do you get yourself out of it or how do you refocus? How do you rebound? Fitness has been my savior for so many things. Um, I mean, I mean, literally part of my process and I have to remind myself of this is when I get an email that pisses me off or mm -hmm. something I was so sure is going to happen falls through. Um, you know, a role that I was promised, that even got a contract in, and all of a sudden they went in a different direction, recast, funding drops, there's a million different things. I, I don't respond immediately as much as I want to, because I mm. know that's coming from such a bias of emotion. Mm. Um, and it's normal to feel these emotions. In fact, you can't control the emotion that you feel. So I think that's not something to wrap good. your head around. You can't control it. You know, mm -hmm. whether you're happy or sad and you cry or you, you're frozen in fear, that is your body's natural freaking response and instinct. Yeah. But what you can control is reaction to that feeling. Mm -hmm. And so differentiating and reminding myself to separate that is like, dude, I'm so upset or I'm really bummed or cool. That's normal. That's natural. Feel the feels. Mm -hmm. But then going and getting a physical workout, you know, sometimes if it's anxiety, I'll go on a run. Or if I'm really upset, I'm going to go and get some Muay Thai and some, some, some mitts and some pads on because that allows me to get back to an even level to make a smarter decision and give a better response. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. So, so if, if, we, if we wanted to find tickets, we, we want to find you on tour, we, we want to follow you on social media, how do we do that? Yeah, anything and everything I'm doing is going to be on uh, at James Maslow. So Instagram. Twitter, Facebook, occasionally YouTube. Um, but yeah, anything anything up there. So just posted the expanded dates for Europe to the European and UK fans, a big time rush. Thank you so, so much. It's sold out in pre-sale. And so we added four or five more shows. We expanded venues. So 
that's going on sale. Um, well, Monday, but I don't know when this is. When is this airing, Eric? <laughs> this will air in about uh, six days. Okay, perfect. So all that is on sale right now. If there are any tickets left, definitely go get them. Um, and then everything else, more music, my own personal projects, a lot of the film and TV I'm developing. Just keep up with me on social media because uh, you'll hear about it first there. How about a book? I've toyed with it for a long time, and I think it's certainly in my future. But uh, okay. the only book a that – <laughs> you know a guy. Okay, that would be helpful. <laughs> yeah, look, that's, that's on the list of things to do, and okay. it's not even that far down. So – Okay. I'll let you know when it's coming out. <laughs> this sounds great. Well, thanks for joining me today. It, you, you have, you, you, I mean, it's, 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 it's so great to talk to you, to, to, to hear your perspective. Uh, it's, it's been a good time. Thank you so much. Eric, it's my pleasure, man. I really appreciate you having me on. It's always nice to talk with you. It's been my pleasure. You, you be well. Take care. All right.